ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم اما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون او بليفرز بي مايندفل اوف جاد هاف جاد كونشسنس ام تو ذا اكستنت ذات از هيز جاد دو اند دو نوت داي اكسبت ذات يو سبمت تو هيم ام توديز توبيك ان شاء الله I wanted to speak on religious guilt. And religious guilt usually has a particular connotation for us in this culture. It is something <clears throat> often that is associated with a negative um meaning or intonation and often it has the sense of being over responsible for for matters within religion. So there's a sense of over responsibility or misplaced guilt. Um I will be using it in a similar sense um but by the end of this short um uh, reflection I'll have a more solid definition for you but I'll be building up um to it throughout this um talk. So to begin with I got kind of want to launch from our personal experiences. Um often times um when we fall short in Islam when we uh feel we're falling short in some kind of moral in some sort of moral or religious sense we um uh at the moment of sin um we also tend to have feelings of uh low self-worth uh feelings of um not feeling good enough so the kinds of thoughts that sort of get intermixed at the moment of falling short in some capacity um religiously speaking we get this feeling of i'm not good enough for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm not good enough for his mercy I'm not good enough for him to forgive me. Um what I've done is just so unforgivable. So sin and falling short in the deen or in religion often becomes a sort of meeting point for our feelings of of unworthiness and low self-worth and low self-esteem um alongside uh you know uh, alongside perhaps an objective sense of 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 have acknowledgement that indeed we've fallen short in something many times these things get intermixed in ways that are not healthy for us um where do these feelings come from a lot of times um it has to do with our relationship um with making mistakes that is often taught to us at a very very young age or through different experiences it can come from various authority figures like parental figures or other figures in our lives teachers or or um um you know the community as a whole or particular uncles and aunties you know experiences um inform us in our developmental stages in regards to how we're going to really uh, interact to some of uh, how we experience our own shortcomings and failures um so for instance um and to give this kind of last point a bit more flesh um perhaps we've heard growing up for instance that when we make a mistake whether it's indirectly it can be implicit through tone of voice or the way someone responds to us or or does not respond to us when we uh, make a mistake um it can feel like we're utterly nothing now we've made a mistake and therefore it's irrecoverable and we're just totally unworthy we just you know are reduced to nothingness to zeroness that kind of a message especially when um you know in our developmental phases and beyond that when we have these kinds of experiences where someone responds to a mistake or failure we've made in this uh zero sum way um it can really start to instill or become a part of the narrative of low self-worth and low self-esteem within us um but uh often um this sort of reaction is built into us from our experiences with human authority with human authority the way we interact when we make a mistake um in this in this way of feeling unworthy often has to do with our experiences in this life and with um often with authority figures or or other experiences that have uh, made us feel shameful or 
or um, unworthy once we fall short. Um, the task before us, right, the task before us as Muslims is to untangle these feelings of unworthiness and of low self-esteem that have developed uh, of this sense of utter nothingness when we make a mistake from um, essentially untangle our experiences with human authority um, from divine authority, untangle our spiritual and emotional responses to human authority from the way we are meant to be in relationship with divine authority and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's not easy. It's a very difficult task to do so. Um, um, it's a, it requires a lot of inner work, a lot of reflection and introspection. But towards that end, um, I think talking about it and becoming aware of, of it is the first step. Um, one of the ways in which we can remember that the authority that we are dealing with in our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in relationship to our morality and our sense of um, trying to follow this religion is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is not one that expands and constricts based upon how we look at ourselves. It does not become less because we see ourselves as less and it does not get expanded because we see ourselves as better. It is independent of that, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us with the divine names such as Hu al-Wadud, He is the All-Loving, Al-Wadud, Al-Ghafoor, He is the All-Forgiving, the Ever-Forgiving, uh, Ar-Rahim, the Ever-Merciful, um, so he has these names that are there to remind us that indeed his mercy is vast and it's permanent and it's everlasting and it's always there for us. Um, often what happens when we sin and we fall short, um, when we try but miss the mark, the question, the internal question that we're met with is, am I worthy of God's forgiveness? Am I worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, now that I've done this thing? Am I good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on me? Am I good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to still love for me, to still love me, to still care for me? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still love me? Or am I so uh, dirty and unworthy now that I can he cannot, that, that's just impossible for him? Um... This is often the kind of thinking that arises, but I want to point us to another question, a question that may be more helpful when we fall into these feelings. And that question is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, is God's mercy vast enough to hold me? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and love warm enough to encompass me in my darkest moments, in my most broken moments? Is my self-loathing greater or is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for me greater? Which one would win out? Um, and I think the answer is obvious here. But the change in perspective from looking inwardly of how terrible we are now that we've fallen short versus um, keeping the heart's eye on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the capaciousness of his mercy is the room and the breathing room that sometimes we need to pick ourselves back up and move forward um, in a positive sense and um, stop beating up on ourselves, basically. Um, uh, the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, represents is very different from human authority and these sorts of experiences that we have. Um, and given that we prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about five times a day, um, well, five times a day, ideally, um, at the least, then, you know, we imagine who you're prostrating to. We're prostrating to someone that does not punish us for being human. You know, when we're doing such an intimate act, it's um, where you're, you're giving yourself to some a being completely surrendering yourself to someone, that being, you know, that act only gains meaning when you know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish us for being human. 
It does not punish us out of a sense of cruelty or a sense of numbness or a sense of cold heartedness or a sense of turning away from us, um, uh, you know, for no for no apparent reason. Um, there's no sense of tyranny in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, or coldness or callousness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are human qualities. These are qualities that can come up in, in relationships of human authority. Um, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he does punish, it is from his justice. It is from his justice. And it is from the fact that he is the truth, al-haq. He is al-haq and he is al-adl. And um, the way in which his justice relates um, to his punishment is obvious, but the way in which al-haq, that divine name, relates to the sense of um, punishment is more that uh, in the afterlife, what we've done meets us. And so truth reveals things to us about ourselves that we, we may have hidden. So for instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Qiyamah, that, um, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا That rather mankind or humanity or the human being is, is witness, you know, he is watching himself. He, he, he experiences self completely. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا He is watchful over his self. وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَاذِيرًا Even if he puts up excuses even if he puts up excuses. So at some level, we know what we do and don't do and how we fall short in the many ways that we fall short as human beings. There's always some witnessing that the self is doing within us of that process, even if we throw up excuses. But on the day of judgment, these truths about who we truly are are revealed to us and there are no more excuses and there's no more... Um, there's no lack of clarity anymore about who we are and what we've earned and what we've sent ahead. So, so this is the vantage point to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justice and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, this divine name of Al-Haq in that he reveals these things to us. And there's many more names and ways that you can understand um, how our sins are revealed to us. This is just one vantage point and it's minimal and it's not complete. Um, uh, the last thing I guess I want to say is that religious guilt, um, the definition that I wanted to offer you. So religious guilt in the way that I'm defining it, what it does is, is that it centers our feelings of low self-worth. It centers our feelings of low self-worth and magnifies them before our heart's eye to such an extent that these shortcomings, these sins, our feelings of low worth and unworthiness become greater in our heart's eye than the capacity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy to look over, to forgive us, to, to encompass us with his mercy, to hold us in his mercy and his warm embrace. That essentially is religious guilt. It's an obstruction in this sense. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deity that I'm saying we prostrate to and we worship to and that we surrender ourselves to is an authority that we do so willingly, knowing that this authority is perfect and beautiful and true and good and just and will not wrong us and it always has an open embrace ready for us. Um, so religious guilt is that which obstructs the path to true repentance, in fact, to, to true tawbah because it keeps us in a state of beating up on ourselves and doesn't give us the room that we need to accept that we have made a mistake and now it's time to move on and perhaps to make some changes or perhaps to just have renewed energy to continue that struggle. Um, either of those options are, 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 are good ways to move forward but continues, but basically getting stuck in our feelings of low self-worth and low self-esteem, that's not true repentance and that's not doesn't give us the room that we need to truly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn back to him and feel like whenever we make a mistake we can turn to him and he will always be there for us aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa lisa'il almuslimin fastaghfiruhu inna Allah ghafurur rahim allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid rabbana ighfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa sunna ala qawmin kafirin 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه ربنا اغفر لنا ربنا ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم اللهم اغفر لل Mu'mineen wal mu'minat ala ahyai minhum wal amat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask you to forgive us Have mercy on us, accept from us on this blessed day of Jum'ah Ya Allah we ask you to bless our, our families, bless our children, bless our parents, bless those that have passed on We ask you to grant them the best, we ask you to alleviate the suffering um, and the sicknesses, um, the health issues uh, the financial issues, the all, all kinds of stresses that may befall our community, we ask you, we ask you, Ya Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, to to um, lift these difficulties, to help us assist one another, to help us become, um, be there for one another. We ask you to re re alleviate from us feelings of religious guilt, Ya Allah, that are obstructions to our connection to you, and we ask you to make us true to Wabin, true. People that turn to you, Rabbil Alameen, when we fall short. Bi rahmatika, ya arhamar rahimin. Ameen. Alhamdulillah.